No racing decade ever had a start like the 1970s. Dijinsky, Milreef and Brigadier Gerard. Three horses of the century only a year apart. No derby winner more majestic than Dijinsky. No arc winner more of a mould breaker than Milreef. No miler more complete than Brigadier Gerard. Dijinsky was the latest and greatest of all the horses handled by Lester Pickett for the Irish genius Vincent O'Brien, who early in the colt's career warned owner Charles Engelhardt that his colt might be untrainable. But the talents were harvested. Unbeaten as a two-year-old, Dijinsky then came over to Newmarket for the 1972,000 guineas to saunter up as an odds-on favourite should. The derby at Epsom was always the target. And here the challenge was headed by the star French coach Gia, trained by the legendary Etienne Pollet, and ridden by the great Australian Bill Williamson. When Gia cut for home early in the straight, there was a moment when it looked as if he might get Dijinsky in trouble. Then, for the first time, Lester had to ask for magic, and Dijinsky settled things majestically in a new, fastest electrically recorded time. No horse and rider since has so ruled the imagination like Lester and Dijinsky did in that summer of 1970. After coasting up in the Irish Derby, he and Lester effortlessly won the King George at Ascot to be hailed as Dijinsky the Wonder Horse. The target now was to step up to a mile and three quarters and win the St Ledger and so become the first horse in 35 years to win the Triple Crown. But Ringworm ruined Dijinsky's preparation and while on the day it looked as if he'd eased home ahead of Meadowville, Pickett's finesse hid the horse's fatigue. Dijinsky was never the same again. His nerves were shot in the paddock before just failing in the arc and were no better at Newmarket before the champion stakes. But for that ringworm, he would surely have retired an undefeated winner of the Triple Crown. Where Dijinsky was massive, Milreef was almost miniature. His one defeat as a two-year-old in 1970 was an unlucky short head in France by the European champion My Swallow. But he won the Coventry by six length, the Jim Crack in a bog by eight, the Dewhurst by four. It would be he who would start favourite against My Swallow and Brigadier Gerard in the next year's 2000 guineas. The Brigadier was the perfect shape for the racehorse. Big, handsome, balanced, the beau ideal. As a two-year-old, he began lower key than Milreef, so much so that despite being unbeaten and unchallenged in his first three races, he was only third favourite behind future top sprinters, Mummy's Pet and Swing Easy, when he closed his season at Newmarket in the Middle Park Stakes. That victory should have been seen as a statement of intent when Brigadier Gerard returned to Newmarket to face Milreef and My Swallow in the greatest 2,000 guineas ever run. But Milreef's twinkle-toed brilliance and effortless warm-up victory saw him made favourite at 6-4, even in front of his still unbeaten conqueror, My Swallow. With Brigadier Gerard, incredibly in hindsight, there to back at 11-2. Eyes were on Milreef and My Swallow as they dueled in the lead. But they should have noted the confidence oozing from Joe Mercer, our top Brigadier Gerard. And when ordered, the Brigadier was ruthless in execution. Brigadier Gerard was as good a miler as ever lived. Joe Mercer even believed he would have picked off Frankel. Milreef's team may not have believed he could be beaten over the Guinea's mile, but despite doubts in the Colts' pedigree, trainer Ian Balding moved him up to a mile and a half for the derby with utterly triumphant results. For Mill Reef's Epsom win started a sequence for him and jockey Jeff Lewis, unequalled ever since. A record-breaking eclipse stakes over a mile and a quarter, and then back up to a mile and a half to take the King George by six lengths, and then the Arc de Triomphe by three in another record-breaking time. Those wins saw Mill Reef, not Brigadier Gerard, made horse of the year, and the 1972 season offer the prospect of the next year's Eclipse Stakes being billed as the greatest rematch in modern racing history. Milreef started the season as he had left off with a devastating victory at Longchamp. Brigadier Gerard warmed up impressively at Newbury, 
but after Mill Reef then struggled to win the Epsom, he was found to have a virus, had to miss the eclipse, and the race of the century would never happen. As it was, the Brigadier had a hard time to win on the soft ground of that eclipse, but had broken the track record at Royal Ascot over a mile, was then returned there to tackle a mile and a half in the King Jewels. He won to keep his 15 race unbeaten record intact. Then the sequence broke. Brigadier Gerard moved on to the first running of what was to become the Judmont International at York. But at three to one on, few were ready for the upset. Few beside the acclaimed Panamanian jockey Braulio Baitza, flown in for the ride on Roberto and flying his partner out of the gate as if he had the devil up behind. It was a lead Roberto never relinquished and along the way he smashed the track record as well as the aura of the Brigadier's invincibility. Brigadier Gerard ended up his career with 17 wins from 18 starts and the winner of the finest 2,000 guineas ever run. I've never seen a better miner. Yes, at that distance, Frankel would have had to fight. For Millreef, the rest of 1972 was very different. As he began to recover from the virus, there were golden times on the gallops at Kingsclear as hopes rose for his tilt at a second arc. But one morning in August, his cannon burn broke and the battle for Ian Balding and his team was to save his life, not salvage his career. In a seven hour operation on a makeshift hay bale based operating table in the saddle room, Surgeon Jim Roberts somehow carried out a seven hour operation to plate the leg together. His skill was hugely helped by Mill Reef's own temperament, whose attitude towards his giant walking plaster made him the model patient and gave him another 14 years in another career at the National Stud. In that role, he gave us the Derby winner Shirley Heights and Reference Point to add to the memories of his own glorious summer of 71. So, Mill Reef, Brigadier Gerard and Nijinsky, three very different horses, but so brilliant at their best that it's impossible to set them apart. Three very worthy Hall of Famers, and we can be sure that we'll never see three of their like so close again.